August 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ecclesiastes chapters 9 through 12 of the Old Testament. So I reflected on all this, attempting to clear it all up. I concluded that the righteous and the wise, as well as their works, are in the hand of God. Whether a person will be loved or hated, no one knows what lies ahead. Everyone shares the same fate, the righteous and the wicked, the good and the bad the ceremonially clean and unclean, those who offer sacrifices and those who do not. What happens to the good person also happens to the sinner. What happens to those who make vows also happens to those who are afraid to make vows. This is the unfortunate fact about everything that happens on earth. The same fate awaits everyone. In addition to this, the hearts of all people are full of evil, and there is folly in their hearts during their lives then they die. But whoever is among the living has hope a live dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead do not know anything. They have no further reward, and even the memory of them disappears. What they loved, as well as what they hated and envied, perished long ago, and they no longer have a part in anything that happens on earth. Go, eat your food with joy, and drink your wine with a happy heart because God has already approved your works. Let your clothes also be white, and do not spare precious ointment on your head. Enjoy life with your beloved wife during all the days of your fleeting life that God has given you on earth during all your fleeting days, for that is your reward in life and in your burdensome work on earth. Whatever you find to do with your hands, do it with all your might, because there is neither work nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave the place where you will eventually go. Again, I observe this on the earth. The race is not always won by the swiftest. The battle is not always won by the strongest. Prosperity does not always belong to those who are the wisest. Wealth does not always belong to those who are the most discerning. Nor does success always come to those with the most knowledge. For time and chance may overcome them all. Surely no one knows his appointed time. Like fish that are caught in a deadly net, and like birds that are caught in a snare. Just like them, all people are ensnared at an unfortunate time that falls upon them suddenly. This is what I also observed about wisdom on earth, and it is a great burden to me. There was once a small city with a few men in it, and a mighty king attacked it, besieging it and building strong siege works against it. However, a poor but wise man lived in the city, and he could have delivered the city by his wisdom, but no one listened to that poor man. So I concluded that wisdom is better than might, but a poor man's wisdom is despised. No one ever listens to his advice. The words of the wise are heard in quiet, more than the shouting of a ruler is heard among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner can destroy much that is good. One dead fly makes the perfumer's ointment give off a rancid stench, so a little folly can outweigh much wisdom. A wise person's good sense protects him, but a fool's lack of sense leaves him vulnerable. Even when a fool walks along the road, he lacks sense and shows everyone what a fool he is. If the anger of the ruler flares up against you, do not resign from your position, for a calm response can undo great offenses. I have seen another misfortune on the earth. It is an error a ruler makes. Fools are placed in many positions of authority while wealthy men sit in lowly positions. I have seen slaves on horseback and princes walking on foot like slaves. One who digs a pit may fall into it, and one who breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake. One who quarries stones may be injured by them. One who splits logs may be endangered by them. If an iron axe head is blunt and a workman does not sharpen its edge, he must exert a great deal of effort. So wisdom has the advantage of giving success. If the snake should bite before it is charmed, the snake charmer is in trouble. The words of a wise person win favor, but the words of a fool are self-destructive. At the beginning his words are foolish, and at the end his talk is wicked madness. Yet a fool keeps on babbling. No one knows what will happen. Who can tell him what will happen in the future? The toil of a stupid fool wears him out, 
because he does not even know the way to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is childish, and your princes feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobility, and your princes feast at the proper time, with self-control and not in drunkenness. Because of laziness the roof caves in, and because of idle hands the house leaks. Feasts are made for laughter, and wine makes life merry, but money is the answer for everything. Do not curse a king even in your thoughts, and do not curse the rich while in your bedroom. For a bird might report what you were thinking, or some winged creature might repeat your words. Send your grain overseas, for after many days you will get a return. Divide your merchandise among seven or even eight investments, for you do not know what calamity may happen on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they will empty themselves on the earth, and whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, the tree will lie wherever it falls. He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who observes the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know the path of the wind, or how the bones form in the womb of a pregnant woman, so you do not know the work of God, who makes everything. Sow your seed in the morning, and do not stop working until the evening, for you do not know which activity will succeed, whether this one or that one, or whether both will prosper equally. Light is sweet and it is pleasant for a person to see the sun. So if a man lives many years, let him rejoice in them all, and let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that is about to come is obscure. Rejoice, young man, while you are young, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes, but know that God will judge your motives and actions. Banish emotional stress from your mind and put away pain from your body, for youth and the primal life are fleeting. So remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you will say, I have no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light of the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds disappear after the rain, when those who keep watch over the house begin to tremble and the viral men begin to stoop over. And the grinders begin to cease because they grow few, and those who look through the windows grow dim. And the doors along the street are shut when the sound of the grinding mill grows low, and one is awakened by the sound of a bird, and all their songs grow faint. And they are afraid of heights and the dangers in the street. The almond blossoms grow white, and the grasshopper drags itself along, and the caper berry shrivels up because man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about in the streets. Before the silver cord is removed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the well, or the water wheel is broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the life's breath returns to God, who gave it. Absolutely futile, laments the teacher. All of these things are futile. Not only was the teacher wise, but he also taught knowledge to the people. He carefully evaluated and arranged many proverbs. The teacher sought to find delightful words and to write accurately truthful sayings. The words of the sages are like prods, and the collected sayings are like firmly fixed nails. They are given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. There is no end to the making of many books, and much study is exhausting to the body. Having heard everything, I have reached this conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments, because this is the whole duty of man. For God will evaluate every deed, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. God, the commandment that we receive in the New Testament that says that I shall love you, my God, with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my mind, and to love my neighbor as myself. And that commandment is basically what we believe Solomon, who's the writer, possibly the writer, is saying through all this. At the end, he says, having heard everything, having looked at all the aspects of life here on earth, I have reached a conclusion that says to fear God and keep his commandments, because that is your responsibility as a person who God put here on earth. Allow God to evaluate your life and he will. 
He will evaluate all things known, all things unknown to others, all things good, all things bad. So all of this fluff of life, all the whining and dining, the money needed to do that, does that fall in alignment with being obedient to you, God? Does that fall in line with, if I say I love you with my entire heart, with all my strength, with all my mind, are my actions conducive to that? It doesn't mean that I can't go out to dinner and have fun with friends, but there's behavior appropriate at that dinner that is honoring to you, and then there's behavior that's not appropriate. So Solomon takes a long time to say what Jesus summed up in the commandment for us in the New Testament. If we truly just love you, God, with everything we have, if all of our moments in life are taken up with this desire, this intentional desire of pursuing what that love, that relationship looks like, then we don't have to worry about everything else. We understand that rain will fall on the just and unjust, that we will receive things that seem unfair, but we as Christians, as your children, know that you are are a God of pure justice, a God of consistency, a God of love, and a God who will take care of us. And so we will always have a different perspective on things that happen to us than the people that Solomon refers to, the unsaved people, the the people who are evil, uh, the people who don't know anything but how to be foolish. I know that you didn't create a bunch of rules and commandments and guidelines and laws to confine us. In fact, you actually give us all of these opportunities to give us freedom. Freedom from our sin, freedom from our darkness, freedom from our evil ways that Solomon does say consumes our heart. You have actually given us an opportunity and a path to walk away from all of that, to look at our choices in life completely differently than how other people do. And when things happen, to be able to to rely on your strength, God, to deal with them, and to know that if we were the cause of those things happening, that the amazing grace-filled forgiveness that you have for us will cover what we have caused to have happen, what we have sinned about or sinned against. God, thank you for commanding us to rejoice in all situations and giving us so many reasons to be joy-filled. That even when we are going through those valleys of death, and right now it kind of feels like I'm going through one, when we go through those valleys of death, that we can still rejoice in those times, that we can still celebrate that life isn't futile, that there is opportunities to realize that you're taking care of us during those hard, dark times, and always will take care of us during those, those times. And most importantly, that you will evaluate, you will take a look at our life, and we will get to spend, those of us who are your children, will get to spend eternity with you, where we don't have to worry about doing good or doing evil, or doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing or choosing the wrong thing, because we will be in heaven doing the one thing that our heart truly seeks to do, which is worship and glorify you. God, thank you for all the things that I have to be joyful for, And please continue to fill my heart with joy over the things that I think are futile. That nothing is futile. Everything is part of your plan. And we are responsible for our part in that. In your son's name I pray. Amen.